Welcome back, gang. We're going to be going over Section 1-2. Section 1-2 is, to some extent, still some more review from things that you've done in the past. We're going to deal with uh, graphs of equations. And we're going to start off kind of simple, back uh, to what you first used when you learned how to graph equations. And that was making a T-table or T-chart, filling in values, and then plotting them as you go. We're going to get much fancier in our te techniques to do these graphs and learn some uh, methods. But right now we're just going to do some point plotting and, and work with things like symmetry and things of that nature. So our objectives. First two graph equations by point plotting. We're also going to use x and y intercepts to help us make graphs. We're going to use algebraic tests for symmetry and use symmetry to help us graph and we're going to use equations uh, use the equation of a circle to determine the radius and radius and center of a circle or use the radius and center of a circle to find the equation of the circle so this is going to be broken up into four videos anyways we're going to start with point plotting <clears throat> So point plotting, in order to construct a graph, it's not the ideal method because it's tedious and it's time consuming. And if you have uh, more complex graphs, you're going to have to graph more and more and more and more points. And it takes an awful lot of time. So down the road, we want to get to uh, quicker methods to do our graphing. On the plus side, it always works. And it's something that you're probably com uh, comfortable with because... When you were first learning how to do graphing, making a T-chart was exactly how you started. And some of you still use that to this day. We want to try to get away from that. Unfortunately for you, after this chapter, point plotting will be safely tucked away, never to be used again. And that's good news. It's not bad news because you're going to find faster methods to make your graphs. Yeah. Emoji time. All right, so here's how you make uh, use point plotting. You're going to start by making a t-chart, and you're going to choose some random values for x, and then plug and chug to find out what the y value is. You're going to graph each order pair on actual graph paper. I do not want it on your own little handwritten thing. You have graph paper in class for a reason. You want to make sure that you number each axis, the X and the Y. Yes, you have to. You don't have to number every single point, but you do have to spread it out. So maybe you go 2, 4, 6, 8, something like that. If the points show a curve, draw a smooth curve. Don't play connect the dots. Draw a nice smooth curve because that's what we're going to be dealing with is mostly polynomials that have smooth curves. All right, so let's, uh, let's try one out. We're going to graph something simple. We're going to graph the equation 3 plus 2x. Now, by this point, you guys should know that that's a linear function. It's a straight line. There's not going to be a curve. So, preferably, we want to use small, easy numbers. You don't want to use x is 2,356. You want to use numbers like, oh, I don't know, negative 2 to positive 2. We want to try to make this as simple as possible for ourselves. All right, and then we do the plug and chug. You take negative 2 and you plug it in for x and you get your values. All right, so negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And then you plug negative 1 in. 3 minus 2 is 1. For 0, I like to... We're going to use this when we get to... Uh, finding the zeros, it's easy to squander time on this video by finding the materials that I didn't have readily available. Okay, if x is 0, then in this equation we can just ignore that whole term and we know that it's just 3. So we use those quick things to find those points. 3 plus 2 is 5. 3 plus 4 is 7. So now we have a bunch of ordered pairs. We have negative 2, negative 1, 
negative 1, 1, 0, 3, 1, 5, and we're just going to plot those points on actual graph paper with the axes numbered. So there we got some graph paper. There's our five points and a nice line going right through it. Piece of cake, right? Okay, now let's try the next one. This one is curved, okay? This is not linear. I'm curious if any of you guys know how to describe this type of graph. The function is quadratic and the shape of the graph is called a parabola. Now we're going to start with the same small numbers that we used before, but you're going to run into a problem there and you'll understand why in just a second. So I'm going to go with negative 2, negative 1, and so on. And I'm going to plug and chug and get my values. Okay, there they are. Now, uh, with the graph that I had the last time, it only went up to, I believe, 10 in both the X and Y direction. So as you can see, 14 and 23, they're going to go clear off the graph. So I'm either going to have to scale it in a, in a better way uh, or try some other numbers. Uh, notice that the other ones are negative 1, 2, 7, and then it starts to increase rapidly at 14 and, 20, uh, 14 and 23. So maybe I should try some numbers below negative 2. Let's just check that graph real quick to see what it looks like with the points that I have. Okay, I can graph the first three on there. Now I want you to keep in mind that we know that this graph is a parabola. Those three points don't give me the picture of a parabola. They, they almost look like a straight line here. Okay, so we don't know the entire picture. We don't have the vertex. Remember, the vertex is the bottom of a parabola. And we don't have the left side of the parabola, so I'm going to want to use some other points. And the points that I choose are going to be to the left of negative 2. So I'll use negative 4 and negative 3, and I'll plug and chug again. When I plug in negative 4, I get negative 1. Now you already have a better picture of the graph because you can start to see the other half of it. Plug it in negative 3, that actually gives me the vertex. So now I have enough uh, points to complete the graph. And it's going to look like this. nice smooth curve okay so pay attention to whether or not you have enough information in order to make a, a an accurate graph okay the points that we started off with didn't give us a whole parabola they made it look like it was almost a straight line you know enough about graphs by this point that you can um, figure out whether or not you have enough information all right Oh good, that is the end of this video. Adios.